Hey, welcome back. Good to see you again. My name's Sam Hendrick. I'm from Bentley Systems, and I think it says that right down there too. This video, the third one in the series, we're gonna talk about three different things, coincidentally. We're gonna talk about first the loft tool, and combined with that is how we can edit that surface with parametric modeling, fun stuff. Then we're gonna talk about how to create a mesh from contour lines, and then thirdly, my personal favorite is gonna be a new element type in MicroStation. It's called Reality Mesh. It comes from Context Capture, and there's a bunch of videos on that in the Bentley Institute. And then we're gonna see, once we create this Reality Mesh, how do we get it into MicroStation? And then once we have it there, what can we do with it? So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into our 3D file, first exercise. We're going to be continuing in the example workspace that ships with MicroStation Connect Edition and the Metro Station work set. The two files we're going to be working with have been modified. They are the base drawings that ship with the work set called Metro Station, but I've made some changes for the demonstration. The first file we're going to open up is going to show you what it's going to ultimately look like, our final product. The file I'm going to open up is called Architectural-2 Completed. What we're ultimately going to be creating is this blue canopy. That's what our ultimate goal is. And the tool we're going to be using is called Loft. I'm going to open up the other file in the directory. I'm going to go to File Open. The other file we're going to open up is called Architectural-2. And in this file, you can see we have the stairway there, and we have the six posts and the three arcs that are going to be used by the Loft tool to create the canopy. Now, before we get started into that, I want to show you something. I'm only looking at actually just part of my project. And people ask, how do you get just part of your project? It's a much larger project. How do we isolate out just the area that we want to see? How I'm doing this is with a tool called Clip Volume. To demonstrate this, I'm going to clear my current Clip Volume and then show you how I placed it. So I'm going to move up here to my View Controls Tools along the top. I'm going to hold the left button down. It's the second to the last icon going to open up as a toolbox. You can see there's three tools on here. The last icon called Clear Clip Volume allows me to remove my clip volume. So I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to left click or data in the view. And now you can see the entire project reappears. Now to see the whole project, I'm going to do the fit view. Now along those view controls across the top, fit, zoom in, zoom out, things like that. But these can also be accessed by using a keyboard mouse shortcut. On my keyboard, I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to right click. At my cursor appears my view controls. Here's my fit view. I'm going to go ahead and click that. Now I've done a fit. Now on there were other view controls also. So I'm again going to do a shift right click. And then I have these icons which allow me to rotate my view to standard orientations. One of them is top. I'm going to select that. I've rotated to the top. Now I'm going to pan and I'm going to zoom. My area of interest is right here. This is my platform and the stairs. This is where I'm going to be doing a clip volume. I'm going to move my cursor to the first icon in the clip volume toolbox. It's called clip volume. On the tool settings window, again, you need to make sure you've selected what you want. In this case, I'm going to apply a clip volume by two points, basically a rectangle. I'm going to select this, and then I'm going to start right here. I'm going to do a left click. Now, what you see is a shape. On the tool setting window, there's an option that says display clip element. What you're seeing is that clip element. If I was to check that option, once I place the clip volume, then I would still see that shape. In this case, I don't care to see the shape, so I've unchecked it. So I'm going to slide my cursor up, basically encompassing the area that I want to see. I'm going to left click, and there's my clip volume. Now, because I did not have multiple views open, we can have up to eight open simultaneously, it applied the clip volume instantly. If I had other views open, you'd be asked to choose the view to apply it to. Now with it clipped, I'm going to rotate, holding down the shift key, and then holding down the wheel on my mouse. That's going to let me rotate my view, and now I can clearly see my stairway in a view orientation that makes it easy for me to work. Now, I'm going to show you how we created that canopy using a surface tool called Loft. Now, I'm in the modeling workflow, so I have that set. 
the tab I'm going to select, already selected, is called Surfaces. You can see there's a whole bunch of tools. You can see there's a number of different surface tools. The one I'm interested in here, you can see there's an icon that says Loft and there's a little down button below it. I'm going to hold the left button down. You're going to see there's actually three tools. The one we're interested in is the first one. It's called Loft. I'm going to select it. Now there are two different ways to Loft. The one we're going to be doing is Loft by Sections. Now the only three elements that are actually valid to do this are those three arcs. So it's asking me to select the elements. So in this case, I can easily hold the left button down, drag my cursor, and that's how we're selecting them, across the three arcs. Those are the only three elements that are valid, so those are the only ones that are going to be selected. I'm going to let go. You can see a preview of our canopy there. I'm going to do a data, left click to accept. There's my surface for my canopy. Now we're going to be making some modifications to the canopy. The overall length, the position of those arcs, wasn't quite where we wanted them. So we're going to see how we can modify a surface. So I'm going to go to my element selection tool by pressing the space bar. This brings up my pop-up menus. On there is my element selection. I'm going to hover initially over this. You can see this is a parametric surface. MicroStation knows what it is. It knows what elements were used to create it. So when I select this using element selection, what you're going to see are these little icons. This is how we do modifications and two 3D elements in MicroStation. Now the first one of these three arcs, you can see this is the profile for it that I want to modify is this one down here. What I want to do is extend the overall canopy by essentially moving the arc down. I'm going to be extending the surface. So I'm going to select this point. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Now these points here, this represents the center of the arc, and these points represent points along the arc. What I want to do is move the overall arc down. So I'm going to select this point. Now what you're going to see on the screen is the AccuDraw compass appear. Now its current orientation isn't the planar direction I want to move this arc. The direction I want to move, or the plane that I want to move on, an element in the file that represents that would be this point right down here, this top of this ledger. So I'm going to rotate the AccuDraw compass by using a shortcut. It's a two letter shortcut. The letters R E. So I'm going to type in R E. This suspends whatever command I'm in and it puts me in a tool that's going to allow me to rotate the AccuDraw compass by selecting a point or surface of an element. So I want to move my cursor down and as I do this, move it over this ledger here for the stairways, you can see the compass matches that plane. So with my cursor there, my compass rotated, I data, left click. Now my compass is rotated so that I can slide it down along that axis. Now the distance I want to go, it's going to be 0.2. So I'm going to type in 0.2. Make sure I'm indexed, meaning near that axis, it sticks. I'm going to data left click and I've now extended it out. I'm going to unselect my arc. Let's go ahead and do a rotate shift, hold the wheel down and you can see I've extended it out. Now we're going to be doing the same thing for the other side because as I rotate this around, you can see between the end of the canopy and the building, there's a gap. Well, we don't want that. We want to extend the canopy all the way to the building. So we're going to be using element selection, just like we did before. We're going to select. You're going to see again the icons indicating the components used to create the loft. We're going to be selecting this one. Now you can see the points that we have and I have my center point here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. This is again the point that I want to modify, the center of the arc. I'm going to click on that. You see the AccuDraw compass appear. Now the compass is currently flat or planar to the side of the building. I want to rotate the compass. Now the shortcut I'm going to use, there are two shortcuts that allow us to rotate the AccuDraw compass about its X and its Y axis. Now how do we know what X and Y are? The red tick mark on the compass, that's the AccuDraw compass's X axis. The red tick mark is the positive X axis. The green tick mark is the compass's Y. The green indicates the compass's positive Y. I want to rotate my AccuDraw compass about the x-axis. So there's a two-letter shortcut, the letters Rx. Watch the compass rotate when I type in Rx. 
Now you see the compass is rotated about the x-axis. There's RY and there's also RZ. Those are two other shortcuts. Now I can move my cursor out along that axis. Now what I want to do is I don't just want to move it out any distance. I want to move it till it becomes perpendicular to or parallel, depending on how you look at it, to that building. So if I just move my cursor along the edge of the building here, it's basically going to snap to these points and that's not what I want. I want to lock myself on this axis. So I'm going to do this by, it's an AccuDraw shortcut, pressing enter on my keyboard. We call this smart lock. Now with it locked on this axis, I can move my cursor along and I can find a point here along this building. I can go anywhere if I want to and it's going to snap to these points here. So if I can find a point that's gonna let me snap, how about if I just rotate it around a little bit and find one of these points and I can actually move it anywhere I want, even over here, I can pick that point as long as it represents the total distance. Data, left click, and there it is. I can unselect, I can rotate my view around and you can see that my canopy goes right up against the building there. This was using the loft tool, using some AccuDraw shortcuts, and also modifying an existing solid. In this next example, what we're going to be doing is taking a file that has contour lines in it, line strings, and creating a mesh. Now the example file that we're going to be working with doesn't happen to ship with MicroStation. The source of this data came from Open Roads Concept Station, another Bentley product. I'm going to open the file up to give you an idea of how many elements we have in here. I'm going to use element selection. I'm going to select all the elements and you can see on the status bar, I have 1,418 elements. That's quite a few elements here. I'm going to clear my selection set. Now, before we get into creating the mesh, I want you to see that as I hover over these, these are just line strings. Before we create our mesh, something you need to consider is when the mesh is created, whatever your active attributes are, your level, color, style, and weight determines what the mesh is going to be. So I have my level set to mesh, my color, my style, and my weight set the way I want it. Now, the tool that I want is called Mesh from Contours. My current workflow is drawing, so I'm going to need to change this to modeling. And when I do that, I'm going to get different tabs. I'm going to go to the mesh tab and I'm going to see mesh from contours. I'm going to go ahead and click on that icon. On my tool settings window, I have two options, expand to rectangle and keep original. Now you may want to keep the original contour lines in addition to creating a mesh, so that's your choice. In this example, I won't be doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these elements here. If you have other levels turned on with other data, you probably want to turn that off before you do that. So I'm going to select this and then it's going to ask me to data to accept preview. So I'm going to do a data. Now this may take a bit of time on your computer. It's all CPU intensive. So we're going to wait a moment for this to finish its work. Once it's done, you're going to see a preview there. I'm going to do one more data to accept this. And we're done and now we have a mesh surface. Now this is actually highway one along the California coast. So the bottom area down here is actually the Pacific ocean. This area here was a slide area. Currently it was called the mud slide. Now if I zoom in, You can see there's my mesh surface. Now I have my display style set to smooth, so I can change this if I wanted to see more in line what the mesh looks like. Now I'm gonna zoom in over here. I can begin to see some of the, the triangles based here. So I'm going to go to my view attributes across the top. You can see where it says display style set to smooth. I'm gonna change this and we're gonna change this to illustration with shadowing. And now you can see the mesh surface and the density of the mesh surface. And if I zoom in and then I do a tentative and then I can rotate again, shift holding the wheel down. You can see I can rotate this around to 
get an idea of what it looks like. It's actually a pretty good mesh. Now I'm going to go ahead and change this from illustration shadows to one of my favorite, which is thematic height. Again, I click in the view. And then I'm going to do a fit view by doing shift right click and there's fit view. And I'll close my view attributes. And you can see there's my thematic height indicating the high and the low points by color. Again, I can rotate my view around and I've got a pretty good mesh surface here based on or created from just my contours. Now for the fun part. This is my personal favorite. This is a reality mesh. Now what you see spinning around behind me, this is a reality mesh. All those cones, that was where the drone was at when it took the picture. I took 270 pictures, fed them into context capture, and then I can produce out into MicroStation a 3MX file or reality mesh. So I'm going to show you briefly how I create that in context capture. And then we're going to show how we can bring it into MicroStation. You're going to love this. This is really cool stuff. So let's go ahead and get into it. In this section, what we're going to talk about is something called a reality mesh. And what I'm going to show you is how I created the reality mesh from photos taken by a drone, fed into Context Capture, another Bentley software, and that's how we produced the reality mesh in MicroStation. So I'm going to take you quickly through that process. Here we have 270 photos taken by a drone on an interchange on 395 and 14. Once I have these photos, I feed them into Context Capture. I'm going to switch to Context Capture. In Context Capture, this is where I take the photos. You can see them listed here. I then process the photos, and then I choose what type of output that I want. In this case, I output something called a 3MX file. And I'm going to go over to the Reconstruction tab, and I'm going to go to 3D View. And here I can see a 3D view of where the drone was when it took each one of the photos that were used to create it. I'm going to go back to the General tab. We have an option here. It says Open the Context Capture Viewer. I'm going to open that up. On the Context Capture Viewer, this is going to allow me to view my 3MX model, but it also allows me to do calculations. So there's the measure icon up here. I've already got the dialog open. I have options like coordinates, and I've assigned a coordinate to it. This is California NAT 83 Zone 5 US Survey Foot. I can do distance. I can do surface calculations and volume calculations. I'm going to do a surface calculation here. And what I want to do is measure the area of that bridge deck, just the concrete. So I'm going to zoom in down here, rotate my view around. I'm going to pick the start point here. I'm going to go to the next corner here. And then I'm going to pan on up and zoom in. And I'm going to pick the next point. And to complete this, I'll double click the left button. And now I have an area calculation for just the bridge deck. You can see it's just over 10,000 square feet and I also have a perimeter value. So this is the context capture viewer. If you're just looking to get some rough calculations, you're, you'd be able to use this tool to do that. But what we want to do is bring it into MicroStation. So I'm going to switch to MicroStation. Here's the DGN file that I created. It's coordinate correct. It has a geographic coordinate system. I then attached the 3MX mesh model from context capture as a reference file, and then I merged it in. So here's the MicroStation file. And if I hover over it, you can see the element type is Reality Mesh. Now I'm going to be doing a clip volume on this file so we can see how we can do cross-sectional views and measurements. So I'm going to rotate my view to top. So I'm going to do a shift, right click, and I'm going to switch to top view. And this is the area that I'm interested in getting a cross-sectional view of. This is the retaining wall. I'm going to go to my Clip Volume Toolbox. We already looked at this in the prior section. I'm going to click Clip Volume, and then I'm going to make sure I have selected Section Clip Tools. And then in this case, what I'm going to do is apply Clip Section by Plane. I'm going to be drawing a line, so I'm going to be picking two points. I'm going to start out about here. I'm going to do a left click. I'm going to move my cursor over here. You'll see a line appear. I want to make sure that my line is approximately perpendicular to the retaining wall. So I'm going to left click again, and now you can see my clip volume is applied. I'm going to rotate my view. Now you can see the section here. 
Now this green arrow allows me to move the clip plane. So if I click it, you can see I can slide the clip plane along my mesh model. So I'm going to move it right about here and then I'm going to zoom in and pan so I can see this section of the retaining wall. What my goal was is to measure the height of that retaining wall. I'm going to be using MicroStation's measure tool. So I'm going to, on my keyboard, hit the space bar and my pop-up menu appears. Third row, first icon is measure and I'm going to choose the measure distance tool. And my method is set to between points. I'm going to click at a point near the top, left click data. I'm going to go down to the bottom down here, left click data. And on the tool settings window, I can see my approximate height here, just a little bit more than 11 feet tall. Now, if I only wanted to see the cut and I didn't want to see the mesh model behind that, I can change this by using my view attributes. I'm going to go to my view attributes toolbox. So my view controls up here, I'm going to click on this. Now, if you ever have a clip volume in the view that you've selected, you're going to see clip volume settings down below. And right now I'm seeing the cut is being displayed and I'm also seeing forward. Forward is the mesh model back there. Well, if I want to turn that off and only see the cut, there's a display option right here. I click on that and now I'm looking at just the cut or the cross section. Now, if I wanted to rotate my view so that that clip is planar to my view, I can zoom out. I'm going to go to my element selection tool. So I'm going to press the space bar. There's element selection. I'm going to select the clip boundary element right here. With my cursor over this element, I'm going to press and hold the right button on my mouse. This is the context menu. It's recognizing that I have a clip volume selected. One of the options is align view to clip volume. I'm going to select this and now I can see my section cut is now planar to my view. So now I can see the cross section. There's my slope. I can see the vertical height of my retaining wall. I can also see the slope on the other side of the road. So this is using a reality mesh generated from context capture in MicroStation. And if I want to get rid of my clip volume, I can clear clip volume right here, click in the view, and then I can rotate my view back around so I can see it. So I hope you found this interesting. This is some exciting new stuff available in Connect Edition. Enjoy. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.